Hey folks, uh, looks like we have an upcoming test in our Integrated Math 1 class on modules uh, 19, 20, and 21. So we're splitting Unit 8 up into two sections here. So we'll do 22 and 23 after this. And I think our school is combining a little bit of uh, 24 in there. Also, it's getting towards the end of the year. So it's about April-ish. So April 1st is our is our test, and it's not a Fool's Day. It's a, we're going to have a test on, on uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Anyways, okay, so this looks just like your upcoming test if you go to our school at Rio Americano High School. So I made the test. I made this practice test, and so they look identical. I just changed the numbers. Okay, so this one says um, find the values of of x and y and it says the lines are parallel so see these arrows right here that means those lines are parallel right there okay these angles up here are a linear pair we can do this one plus this one equals 180 except we got a 4x plus 18 plus 3y plus 26 we got x and y involved that's not going to help us too well so what i'm going to do first is do these alternate interior angles alternate interior angles are congruent so 4x plus 18 is going to equal that, um, uh, that 2y plus 50 right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract off 8 or 2x on both sides first, and then I'll subtract off 18, and then divide by, by 2, and we get x equals 16. That's one of the answers. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, use the linear pair up here. I'm going to go ahead and say this angle plus this angle equals 180 because it makes up this straight line right there. Okay, all right, and then we can go ahead and plug in. Uh, this x right here, since we know what x is, is 16, put it right next to that 4 and it becomes 4 times 16, which is um, uh, 64. And then we can go ahead and add 64, 18, and 26. And when we add all those, we get 108. And now we subtract 108 from both sides. And 180 minus 108 is 72. And 3 goes into 72, 24 times. So there's our x and y's. That's what it's asking for, okay? All right. Now remember, you can pause this, so if I'm going too fast, please pause it. Some people say, you're going too fast. Well, just hit the pause button, <laughs> and you can go back and rewind and hear it again and again and again. So sorry if I go too fast, otherwise this uh, video will take a long time. Okay, so besides being, uh, besides being congruent, supplementary, or equal, what names are the angles, angles A and C? Okay, look at these. What kind of angles are these? These are called vertical angles right there, okay? What if I asked you about these kind of angles, you guys? I was saying this with my kiddos in class today. What kind of angles are A and E called? Those are called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are if I slid this line on top of this line right here, A would slide right down on top of E. So those ones that slide down on top are called corresponding angles. How about this, this angle, A and G? What kind of angles are those? Those are alternate exterior angles. How about E and C? Those are alternate interior angles. How about C and F? Those are same-sided interior angles. I'm saying that, you guys, because um, I made the test, and so some of them have those corresponding angles or same-sided interior angles. Or What about these guys right here? Um, a and B. Those are a linear pair. A and D are also a linear pair. All right, so what angles are congruent to angle G? Well, since these lines are parallel, then angle G always equals angle E because vertical angles are always equal. But since they're parallel, E equals A, so G is going to equal A also, okay? And then A equals C. So what are the angles congruent to G? E is, A is, and C is. Okay, those are all the congruent angles. What theorem or postulate explains that... Uh, uh, C and G are equal, okay? So C and G are equal. That's called the, the corresponding angles theorem, okay? And I don't care if you wrote postulate on there, you guys. Some books call it postulate. Some books call it theorems. And Joseph asked today, what's the difference between a postulate and a theorem? A postulate is a starting point. It's what we assume to be true that doesn't have a proof. And then theorems are things that are proven. So some books start in different places and they call them postulates and they use those to prove the theorems while other books start with the other books theorems as postulates and use anyway. So don't get too hung up on postulates and theorems. Just postulates are assumed to be true without proof and theorems are, uh, are proven. Okay, so in the figure, you guys, it says that BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. 
Okay, if it's the perpendicular bisector, that means this point is equidistant to that endpoint and that endpoint and any point on this perpendicular bisector. B is equidistant to C and A. So um, perpendicular bisector says any point on here is going to be the same distance away to that and that. So I'm just going to do 7x minus 21 equals that 4x right there. Okay, and then I'll add 21 and subtract 4x and divide by 3 and we get x equals x equals 7. Okay, now now we're not done, you guys. I, did, I didn't circle x equals 7 yet because it also said find the value of BC. So I'm going to plug in 7 right there. So 7 times 7 minus 21. Okay, 7 times 7 is 49. 49 minus 21 is 28. So there's the two answers right there. Okay, so anything that involves with x, you should be doing a little, you know, something, uh, a light should be clicking and thinking maybe x isn't the complete answer. All right, so just make sure you're reading the directions. All right. Okay, now it says in the figure, you guys, it says uh, uh, this is the angle bisector. This ray is the angle bisector of CAB. So if it's the angle bisector, this angle equals this angle. Okay, let's go see what this says. CAD plus DAB. CAD plus DAB is 135 degrees. I don't know what degrees it is. Nowhere does it tell me what degree measure that is, so that's going to have to be false. Okay, how about CAD e, uh, equals DAB? CAD is right here. This angle right here equals this angle. That's true because that ray bisects the angle. It cuts it into two equal angles. Okay, how about this one? Twice the measure of CAD. So if I doubled this angle, would it equal the entire angle? Yeah, that's true because these guys are equal. So if we just double one of them, it'll give me the whole two, the, the pair of them together right there. All right, how about this one? So CAD plus DAB, CAD plus DAB, it equals CAB. Yes, that's true. Do you guys remember the postulate? Why that's true, you guys? Uh, my kids struggled with that. We had it about a month and a half ago. It's called the angle addition postulate. Okay. So, so what the angle addition postulate says is it says that this angle plus this angle equals the whole angle right there, okay? All right, so use the figure to find the value of x that makes these two lines parallel. Okay, so if they're parallel, these same-sided interior angles are supplementary, which means they add up to 180. Okay, so I'm going to combine the like terms, and negative 2 plus 29 is positive 27. Now you have one just like this on your test. I just changed the numbers around a little bit, okay? Minus 27 on both sides, divide by 3, you get x equals 51. Okay, remember, you can pause it. So if I'm going too fast, just pause it, please. All right. So here's a line described by this equation right here. Again, I, I just changed the numbers on your test, okay? So um, uh, it says write an equation of a line that's parallel. Okay, well, parallel I got, means i got to get this slope. Okay, let's get the slope of this line. Same with perpendicular. Parallel lines have the same slope as whatever this line is. Perpendicular lines have the opposite reciprocal, so I flip it and change the sign. Okay, when it's in this form right here, uh, AX plus BY equals C. So see, here's AX plus BY equals C. A is 5, B is 20, and C is 12. So the slope is opposite this number over this number. So negative 5 over 20, which uh, reduces to negative 1 fourth. Okay, now do you remember Y equals MX plus B? All right, and so if it's going to be parallel, then I'm going to use this same slope right here. So I know it's going to be y equals negative 1 fourth x plus whatever b is. Now to get b, I just substitute in this point right here, okay? This point is x and this is y. So put this in right here and put the y in right here and that'll help us get b, okay? So here we go. So let's sub that in and we get that. Now negative times a negative is a positive right here. So right here I have a negative 1 fourth times a negative 4. That's a positive. And this, this is just 1 right here. So I get 1 equals 1 plus b. Well, that means b must be 0. So the equation is y equals 1 fourth x plus uh, negative 1 fourth x plus 0, or just y equals negative 1 fourth x. Okay? Now, a perpendicular slope means opposite reciprocal. So if we flipped this slope right here, 
flipped it, it'd be 4 over 1 and change the sign. That one's negative, so this one's going to have to be positive. So now it's going to be y equals 4x plus b. And then we do the same thing. We go ahead and substitute this point in. This point goes in for x right here, and this point goes in for y right here. And then we're going to substitute that in. Solve for b. So 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and we're going to go plus 12 plus 12. Negative 6 plus 12 gets me 6. So there's the answer right there. All right. Okay, remember, you can pause this, you guys. Okay, so now it says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Find the values of each below. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at some stuff here, you guys. So here's, uh, here's X. X is right here on EF. Okay, let's go up to the, the orders right here. EF is the second and third letter. So that's going to correspond with the second and third letter BC right there. Okay. So EF is congruent to BC, so BC is at 90.6, and EF is 2x plus y. Now, I'm, I can't do anything with that because that has two variables in it. So what i got to do is get the other equation right here. This 2y minus 3 is angle D. Angle D corresponds with the first letter over here, angle A. So angle D and A are congruent, so I'm going to say uh, that 2y minus 3 equals 65 right there, okay? So when we do that, uh, plus 3 to both sides, sorry I did it all at once right there, 65 plus 3 is 68, and so divide by 2, we get y equals 34. All right, and then what we can do now is substitute in 34 right here to get x. So 2x plus 34 equals that uh, 90.6, so we're going to subtract 34, and we get x equals 28.3. All right, now it's asking us to find a, a DE. All right, let's look at DE. That's this guy right here. So DE is the first and second letter, so it's going to be equal to the first and second letter of AB. So DE is the same as AB, which is 64.3. Okay? All right. Okay, so for this part, it says uh, answer as true or false. Okay, so we have the order up here. So is, uh, is the measure of A equal to the measure of D? Yep, that's the first letter. First letter, that one's true. Okay, how about this? Is, is AB, so that's the first and second letter, equal to FE? No, that's the third and second letter, so, so it's not true. AB is equal to DE, okay, so that one's false, okay? How about uh, C congruent to F? Third letter, third letter, that's true. Okay, BC and EF, okay, so BC is second and third, second and third, good. Okay, that one's true also. All right, so now we have a proof, okay? So, again, your test looks just like this. I just changed the letters around. I think I made them A, B, C, D, E, F. And All right, anyways, and that, uh, with that here, let's go ahead and get some free points right here, okay? On proofs, there's always free points. So you're going to put this down in the given right there, right the reason given. We're going to put this down in the last reason right there, and there's some free points, so let's list those down in there right there, okay? All right, now, bisecting means, it says uh, these two guys bisect each other, okay? So LP and MO bisect each other. Here's LP, and here's MO. They bisect each other, okay? Well, if they bisect each other, that means this side must equal this side. And similarly, this side must equal this side, okay? So let's talk about the orders as we're doing that. So definition of a bisector means that they're bisecting, okay? So let's, let, oops, I didn't mean to do that. What happened? I grabbed the wrong one. Here we go. Okay, so definition of a bisector is, um, is, is uh, let's see, it, it cuts it into two equal pieces. So here I say LN, so that's first and third letter, so it's going to be equal to the first and third letter, PN. MN is second and third letter, so ON would be second and third letter. So see how I have them in the appropriate order right there? All right, so what kind of angles are these guys called right here? These are called vertical angles. They're congruent no matter what. So let's go ahead and mark those angles. Uh, vertical angles are congruent right there, okay? And notice I marked the figure. I've been telling my kids, I'm clapping my hands saying, mark the figure. Mark the figure, because when you mark the figure, you guys, you can see, is it is it side angle side? Is it angle side angle? Is it any one of those five ways we can prove triangles congruent? Side angle side. Boom, right there, side angle side, okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and answer these guys. For each of the figures stated, which triangles are congruent? 
the correct order uh, and and why. So the correct order is um, uh, like for example here, it says triangle ABC. So I got to make sure I'm I'm doing the correct order for the other pair of triangles. Okay, look at the markings. Let's go ahead and mark this side. BC equals BC, the reflexive property, and mark the figure. Mark the figure, and then that tells me which method is it going to be okay so is it going to be side 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 no is it side angle side or angle side angle or angle angle side well let's check it out if it was side angle side that would mean this angle right here would be marked it would be the included angle this is a not included angle so this is angle side side and angle side side doesn't work and remember don't make an angle side side of yourself okay because they're not congruent. I showed you an example why uh, a couple of lessons ago. Okay, how about these next guys right here, you guys? Is uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my vertical angles right here. This angle equals this angle right here. Vertical angle. So mark that. Mark the figure. Okay, and then uh, is this uh, side angle side angle side angle um, uh, angle angle side? So looks like we've got a couple of angles. Is this the included side between these two angles? No, it's not. So it's not this one where the side is included between the two angles. It's this one where the side is not included. And it goes angle, angle, side. Watch the markings right here. Angle, angle, then we hit the side. Over here, angle, angle, then we hit the side. So that one's angle, angle, side. And let's get them in the correct order right here, okay? So this one says A, B, D. So here we went from, look at the angles, no markings to the two red guys to the one singleton right there. So we got to go no markings to the two red to the one single right there. So C, B, E is going to be going in right there. All right. Okay, so this next one here, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and do the reflexive property and hit that right there. Okay, so when we got that, and I had some kids say, hey, this one's HL. Well, it's not HL because the H is not being included. The H is this side and this side right here. So it's not HL, even though it is right triangles. This one's going to be angle, side, angle, because the side is included between these two angles. So angle, side, angle, and just make sure you get your letters in the correct order. All right, you guys? Okay, take care. I hope you do great on, on the test next week. Let me know, too. Take care.